CLS Holdings, CLSH stock. This is an interesting stock simply because if you look at their numbers, they're fairly consistent. They're kind of getting there. Some of the prints are pretty good. They do have one 800-pound gorilla in the room, though, that when you look at it, nonetheless, it's kind of an interesting stock as well. As I've mentioned, I'm looking at some of these smaller stocks in this industry because there is no content out there on these guys. Given that, with the shift we're probably going to see with medical legalization here pretty soon, stocks like this are kind of interesting. Let's take a look at some charts I got for you. Here's a quick look on CLS Holdings revenue. Starting to see a little bit of a bump there. Maybe they can continue to get there. I know there's a lot of price pressures in, can, uh, in this industry right now. So you're seeing pricing move downward, which does not do much for wanting to see revenue move upward. Uh, taxation costs and things like this are still problematic within the industry, but that's probably going to shift here real soon. So these things start to get really interesting. But one of the things I like is the consistency at which these guys are kind of producing things. Uh, gross margins are fairly steady. This is something that's actually pretty important that they're not. Some of these companies, you look at them one month, they're single digits. The next month, they're way up there. Then they're right back down. One of the rules of the thumbs Warren Buffett used to talk about all the time is you need to ask a simple question. What can we reasonably assume for the next quarter? And this is important. If we see a company that is continually increasing revenue, we can reasonably assume that they're doing, going to do exactly the same thing. If we see a company that has um, revenue that's kind of all over the board, up 10%, down 15, up 5, down 2, up 12, what can we re reasonably assume? Nothing, because we don't have enough consistency. But when you look at gross margins here, I can reasonably assume that these guys are going to come in right around 50%. Okay, great. If they continue to increase revenue, if they start getting like 5% growth quarter after quarter after quarter, and they can continue to keep their gross margins flatline like this at this kind of level, should they also keep their operating costs sort of flatline as well? The numbers start adding to better and better bottom line. So these are things that I look for. This is an important thing to look at. And I, I love the consistency here. Is it enough? Not really. If they can hit 55%, if they can start getting to 60%, if they really started choking costs out and started hitting for profitability, that would be very beneficial. Uh, operating efficiencies, this is probably where their biggest challenge is when it, with regard to bottom line. We're seeing revenues were kind of flat to moving upward, but so are operating ef uh, efficiencies, which is the opposite of we, what we want. This is mathematics. You take your total operating costs, you divide it over total revenue. If you have a flat nine line number when it comes to total costs, but your revenue increases, your operating efficiencies would continually to decrease, showing a more and more improved number. So when we see revenues kind of increase quarter over quarter like we did in the uh, first chart here, and we see operating efficiencies moving up, that tells us that operating costs are moving higher relative to revenue growth. Never a good thing. What are in operating costs? S, G, and A. Those are your biggest things right there. Sales, general, administrative. In order to make an omelet, you have to break a couple eggs. Sales. That's one of the things right there. They'll start writing off costs within sales, trying to get that revenue. And we see operating efficiencies moving higher. So from a corporate standpoint, you have to kind of look at that and balance that out as to what's the best move forward. Um, EBITDA, of course, I cover this as often as I can. I need to see consistency here. So you're seeing fairly consistent number in gross margins. Revenues were kind of 
up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit. Operating efficiencies are starting to trickle in the wrong direction upward. And the bottom line is EBITDA, you need to see a consistently increasing EBITDA. And this is from a management perspective, what these guys really need to tackle is looking at their costs, choking them out, and getting to EBITDA profitability and consistently growing this. But it's difficult at these lower levels when you're only doing, say, one million a quarter or two and a half million a quarter. When you start hitting like 250 million a, qu a quarter, being more consistent is an easier thing. Uh, moving forward, cash on hand, they're constantly running uh, really low, but that's not the 800 pound grill in the room. Total equity. Effectively, they're kind of BK. Their liabilities exceed assets too much. And that's not a good thing. But there was a huge reversal as they're shifting um, debt and things like this, restructuring debt. So we may see some improvement, but they need to contain those liabilities. Unfortunately, looking at their cost structures, their bottom line is negative. So they're continually in a position where they have to raise capital just to keep going. Never a good recipe. But, and as I've said in a few other videos, this one is kind of interesting because simply because of this. Uh, and, and as I mentioned in a few other videos, I'm going to try and look at some of these smaller companies because as we move closer to medical legalization, all of these stocks are going to go higher simply because there's going to be a mad rush into them. And everybody's going to be scouring everywhere trying to find listings of all these stocks. They're not going to do any research. They're just going to be like, that one hasn't moved yet. Buy it. And they're going to squeeze out the short sellers. If nothing else, short sellers are just automatically going to get squeezed out. Would I buy this stock? It's got negative equity. I wouldn't pay anything for it. They could go BK tomorrow. But with medical legalization probably going to happen within 6, 9, 12, 18 months from now, and all stocks are probably likely going to go higher, or say 80 to 90% of them, it makes this a really interesting stock to look at. For those who have been sitting on this one, CLSH stock, obviously, uh, it's down considerably. A lot. 99%, uh, if not more. Given that, if this thing turns around and you see this thing shoot up much higher like it did back in 2018, for me, I'd take that money and run so fast. They're underwater. But if their stock does hit that, they could issue more stock really quickly, be sitting on some cash, dilute the shareholders, but take care of their negative equity situation. So going forward, it'd be really interesting to see how these guys play their own cards. For me, I just look at these things and I think, considering what's going to happen, this is interesting. I'll see you in the next video.